how to create a 3D metallic plastic swirly design such as this in Photoshop. Edit and fill and fill it with black. Now the initial document background was set to white and that's a key thing because I'm gonna use that with the art history. But then go to the brush tool. And with the brush tool, I'm gonna to apply some brush strokes. But I'm gonna apply it to a layer, a new layer. Always works, I think, best on layers instead of just applying it to a background. So layer and new and layer. As I apply it, you can see what happens. Get a lot of these dots. So how do I achieve this? Well, go to brush settings. You can find that in the window menu. So brush settings, you can see there, brush settings. I don't want the layers there, just move that out of the way. Always seem to stick to each other. I've got shape dynamics. Now I'm going for a 76 with white, but I've set the size just to 100 so you can see the varying size. Also scattering, both axes set to 1000%. It's a pity you can't do it to 2000 or 3000 and simply add it and apply. The end result of the entire design will really depend on how many of these dots you add. If you add too few, it just looks a bit, I think, I don't know, it really does vary. So what you will get will obviously vary from this. I haven't counted them. So it's quite possible you might have 400 instead of my 500. So once you've applied it that, you can go here and select a different brush. And this one's the Art History brush. And I love to do this one. And this, I've done this in a number of videos where you create strands and lines. And for some weird reason, the only brush I've found that seems to work and create those lines, and I maybe I'm wrong, is a little star brush. So if I click on that and I increase the size, you can see it's a star just down there. It's a star. That's all it is. But it creates strands, little lines. And you put it down to about four with the art history, loose medium, and you can apply it. And you get these, you get these lines. Now you can't control the length of the lines. I don't know of any way of doing it to make it obviously go further. How you can vary them, it seems to be part of the algorithm of the art history. And you can apply more or less. I think personally, it works best if you create a lot, so you fill it. Because remember, this is applied to a layer. The layer doesn't have anything in. So an empty layer, completely empty of pixels. So you fill this with this design. Now, unfortunately, oil paint seems to have a problem. And in my previous video, the last one, I used stylized oil paint. And you try it, and the result doesn't seem to work. It doesn't like layers in the way that others do. So filter, you can all use oil paint later, and it's useful later, but I'm just gonna use Gaussian blur just to blur this a bit. Just want a su very subtle blur. I don't want it to be sharp and really just want a nice blurred effect. Now you can do it again. Or you can always, of course, do a quick cheat, which is what I often do, is select the layer, hold down the ultra option key and duplicate it. And straight away you can see you can fill design. And of course you've got your little, oh, you see, you've got that design, you can see it's obvious. But what you do, which often I do, I just rotate it and resize it, just stretch it a bit, make certain you don't get these lines. Now you could, of course, apply the brush strokes again. Perfectly reasonable, but you can see you can fill it with lots and lots to create a, quite a complex design and a variety of it. And of course, once you've got layers, you've also got the option of blend mode. So you can run through and you can see by creating, you can tweak it and create some interesting, so just explore. Just go through these blend modes, find out how it works. Once you've got that, what you do, go to layer and flatten image. Now I've got my general design. Now I'm happy with this design. I've got the lines, I've got the dots. Now you could probably create a brush stroke with a line and a dot. It might achieve much the same. But now you can apply the oil paint. So I'm just gonna to go to filter, stylize and oil paint. And you can see with oil paint, it creates a lovely smear effect. I never go for lighting. Never put that on. If you put it on, it always seems to create additional lines that never look nice. But you can see it all blending, smearing in 100%. So click OK. And you can apply it multiple times if you want. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Channels. Now you could, of course, use the Select menu. It's just as good as well. There's lots of options there. But you can quick go Channels Panel, Game Window, and just click here. 
and then you've got this selection. Edit and copy and paste. Obviously you could use the shortcuts, but I'm just showing it on the screen. So edit, copy and paste. And now I've got this layer. Now I can resize this layer. I don't have to keep it. Don't have to keep it like that. I can resize it. You can see the result of that. Perfectly reasonable to do that. But it's a layer. It means that I can go and apply layer effects. So just go down to effects, bevel emboss. Now you can do this in different orders. You, I, I've done it in this order, but you could do it in other ways. We could apply the twirl effect beforehand and so on. Up to you. The result, of course, will be slightly different, of course. But you've got this lovely sort of like three-dimensional, really oozy sort of surface texture design now. And of course, you can vary this. I've got emboss, smooth, depth. You can vary the depth, and you can see as you do that, the result changes, of course. Size changes there as well. You might want to put it low, get really lo lovely, some more detail, I think, when it's low, the size. You can go for soften. Don't really like that so much. So I keep it basically zero. You can change the angle and you can tweak that. And you can see as you do that, you get different results. I think sometimes when it's closer, you get sort of like it, I don't know, it seems to be wetter. <laughs> I don't know the best way of describing it. Pushing it further out, there's a slightly different, more plastic effect. And you can achieve different effects by just moving this around. Also, you can achieve different results by going for, say, anti-alias. It's very subtle. Glass contour, just go through those and just try those. So you can see that one that makes it a very murky, sort of very unusual, very, very surreal looking design. Click there, you can see very too much, too, too. Well, that one, I think that's lovely. Or that, it's like golden nuggets of something. That one becomes very strange. And you can see, you can just go through them and just try. You can try. Obviously, number of options there. Also, all the other options there as well. Screen, highlight mode, etc. Now, you can go to filter and go for distort and twirl. And you can twirl it. And you can see the effect. The whole thing is twirl. The effect, obviously, as well. So you could do it in either way. Now, you don't have to go with that setting. I've just gone for that setting. But filter, distort, twirl. 213, you could make it maybe just 156. Maybe not so intense. And once you've done that, you can then go to layer and merge image. You could finish at this point. I think that looks quite a really unusual design, but you can also go to image adjustments and levels. Quite often I like to do that. Just, just, just tweak it up here, input levels, push that to the left, push that there to the right, and of course, personal taste, I prefer that to the other. But exactly the same as before, you can go to the channels, or use selections, of course, select menu, you've got options here. But you can also go to channels again, just down here, and just click. And again, you've got the selection. So you can create another one. So again, exact same, edit and copy and paste. And that will create a layer with that, that design. And then, you can always resize it. Don't have to keep it. You can see as you resize it, see the result. And again, you can always rotate it. You can move it around, flip it, transform it. But slightly bigger now. Again, go down to effects, click there, go to bevel and boss, and you can apply exactly the same or tweak it. Don't have to keep it the same. Maybe change the angle, change the gloss contour, just vary it. How it combines, literally infinite combinations of this sort of effect can be created. This one's a lovely one. I think that's really, really nice. And again, change the depth. You might like think, you know, that one's slightly different. Doesn't have to be the same. Maybe change the size on it. Soften. Click OK. Exactly the same. Edit and transform. You can always go and use warp or perspective or rotate or flip. Put it that way. And you can see you can combine them. Again, layer and flatten image. And then you've got that result. I think it's got a lovely, you've got the twirl and you've got the other twirl underneath there as well. These combinations of 3D effects, you can just blend them, combine them in infinite ways. Is that the same as before? Filter and stylize and oil paint. And you can create that. 
or fade, so you edit and undo, or fade, so fade oil paint, and you can always then tweak the opacity, so you don't have to have this extreme. Maybe go for a blend mode, go through darken, multiply, lighten, just try out different variations, click OK. And of course you could continue. Exactly the same as before, simply go to the channels, go here, create a selection from this, and repeat to create ever complex three-dimensional depth, sort of very odd metallic plastic-like designs in a variety of different textures. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Also, as you finish, of course, you're looking at this probably thinking, well, I would really like it to have a bit of color. That's another option. You can always go, of course, image menu, adjustments, and you can add hue and saturation. That's my usual one. Or maybe just go and select the rectangle tool. That's another one I always basic cheat way of doing it. Go to colorize and you can do colorize it. So you don't think, oh, let's go for blue. Blue saturation, just push that there and you can see the result there. Click OK and you've got a lovely blue design or just apply a gradient to it. That's another option as well. If you want it to be obviously not just black and white. So any comments, please put them in below. Always great to hear from you. Thank you much. Bye.